All right. So, of course, I started this right as I was in the middle of chewing something. Give me a second here. Okay. So, what we are, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to solve another one of these. Um, and this one presents a couple of, of like a different look to us that we haven't seen before. So if you look at this, right, what we want this to look like before we can do anything, before we can start using um, axis of symmetry, find my vertex, plot my two points, I need this thing doing this thing where it's in this form, where it's A squared. Or sorry, I'm, uh, that really threw me off seeing that there. Um, where it says um, a x squared plus b x plus c. All right, that's that's what I'm looking for. That's what I need. That's what it wants. And um, and if we don't have that, okay, then we've got a little bit of a problem, right? And the reason it's really important is because if my b term is on a different side from my a term. Um, it, it screws up our sign, right? And it's going to give us the wrong vertex because it's going to make it like negative when it should be positive and it's going to make it positive when it should be negative. It won't necessarily screw up any of the numbers. I mean, it might sometimes, but in this case it wouldn't. But it will screw up our sign and that's bad. All right? So we want to avoid that. So what you always got to do is we always got to rearrange things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this all right, rearrange to get this looking like that. All right, so if I've got x squared plus 5 equals 4x, I know I want everything on one side, and I want one side that says 0. So I want one side that says 0, all right, and then I want everything on the other side. So let's make this side right here my 0 side. We'll make this my 0 side, right? And I can, I can write this the other way. I can put it on the right side. It doesn't matter which side. You can flip those things, right? So if that's the case, that means i got to take my 4x. My 4x needs to go over to the other side, okay? So when I move my 4x over to the other side, if it's positive, and I move it across the equal sign, what happens? Well, it changes signs, right? And the, the mantra I always use is change side, change signs, right? So we've got x squared. Right, and then we're going to subtract 4x, right? I'm going to clear this out here so we, it's not making quite such a mess. Okay, so we got equals 4x. We move the 4x over. So now it's minus 4x, and you can see where that would have loused, loused us up, right? We were trying to do the, um, when we were trying to do the vertex form. And then plus 5, all right? So the x squared and the 5, didn't do anything except let the 4x come on over, and when it came over, it changed its sign. So now it's x squared minus 4x plus 5, and now I can use my x equals negative b over 2a form to find the x coordinate of my vertex, right? So this is going to be my vertex over here, all right, and we'll have this, all right? So let's find my x coordinate. So I'm going to go negative, and then I'm going to take my b, and my b is negative 4, so if I hadn't done that and I just started like from here, I would have gotten something kind of different. And then 2 times 1, well, it's just x squared, so we're just using 1. All right, so now I've got two, pos two negatives. That's going to make a positive, so that's going to give me 4 over 2, which is 2. So the first coordinate of my vertex is 2, and that also means that that is my axis of symmetry is going to be this line that kind of goes through here. Right, that is my axis of symmetry. All right, now let's take our two. And we want to figure out um, what my y coordinate is for my vertex, so I can plot it. So I'm going to take this two. I'm going to put it into my um, my rewritten equation. So I'm going to have equals. All right, actually I don't even need the equal there. Right, for our purposes, just two squared minus four times two plus five. All right, so 2 squared is 2 times 2 because it's repeated multiplication. We have 4 minus 8 plus 5. All right, so you got positive 4 and you got positive 5, so those make 9. So we're going to have 9 minus 8, and that equals 1. All right, sweet. So we got the vertex of 2, 1. So let's go over to 2, let's go up to 1, let's put a point. 
look at this. All right, we have x squared minus 4x plus 5. This thing is opening up, right? This thing is opening up this way, right? And if you're, if you're kind of like having some red flags right now, um, you're not wrong, okay? But if you don't know what I just said or what I meant, just follow along, and it will all make sense in no time. All right, let's, uh, let's plot some points. So we got x. Make my table. I'm going to erase some of this. You can go back and look at the video later. Just rewind it if you need that number again. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now, if you guys want to actually practice substituting in the values, like pick your own values and then substitute them in and see what you get, you can pause the video right now and you can do that. If, uh, if you're still kind of learning, then, uh, then just follow along. All right, so what I look at for my vertex is I look at my x-coordinate is 2. So I'm going to pick the next two integer values to the right. So that means that if I'm starting at 2, I'm going to pick 3 and 4. All right, starting at 2, pick 3 and 4. So let's write those in. We've got 3 and 4. So that's going to give me 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 5. And if I put 4 in, let's just do that right away. Minus 4 times 4 plus 5. Great. So this first one here. So that's going to give me 9 minus 12 plus 5. Uh, Sumer positives. So 9 and 5 is 14. 14 minus 12 is 2. So I have the point 3, 2. So I go over here to 3, and I go to 2. Right? And so that's my, uh, that's my coordinate pair. If you have a hard time seeing where I'm getting that 3, 2 from, um, remember it is your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate after you plug your x-coordinate in. And so that's why I'm getting this ordered pair. I am also going to reflect this because that's how parabolas work. There's my axis of symmetry. Let's reflect that point. Now I have a third point. And let's finish this off and get our fourth and fifth point. So 4 squared is not 4 times 8, guys. Remember, it's 4 times 4. It's this number multiplied by itself this many times. So 4 times 4 is 16 minus, and then it looks like I have 4 times 4 again, so I got 16 plus 5. Well, 16 minus 16 is 0, right? That's 0. And 0 plus 5 is 5. All right, so we have the point four five. So I go one two three four, right here. I'm gonna go up to five. All right, we got one two three four five, and then I'm gonna reflect this over my line of symmetry. So I go two units this way to get to the line. So that means I have to go two units the other side. And oh, here you go. And now we've got this. All right, and time for me to once again show off my absolutely horrible tablet graphing skills. I didn't even hit the dot that time. <laughs> Impressive. All right, now, my solution is where my vertex or, or where any part of the parabola crosses the x-axis. And if you look at this, it doesn't cross the x-axis at any point, and it's never going to, right? It's never going to cross the x-axis. It's not, it's not that kind of graph. So what we call this right now with what we know when we have a situation like this is we would say there are no real roots for this. And what that means for us practically is it's no solution, right? With what we know right now, there's no real roots, so there is no solution, okay? So hopefully uh, going over this again is, uh, is helping out a little bit. And we got one more example coming up that we're going to go through. And then, um, and then we'll be all done with this lesson.